Hey guys, happy holidays. Um, it's 2017, we're a couple days away from Christmas, and um, this may be my last video for 2017. Um, I wanna, guys have been asking me for a while to do a fly tying video, and I've been hesitant on doing it because I'm not a professional fly tire, and these guys who have sites out there for fly tying, they got it down to a science, and they can really do, um, like make it look real simple and get in there real nice and clear and I hope I can do it justice too. Um, today, uh, I guess this is my Christmas present to my subscribers is I will do this um, video and I will be tying some of the more common flies that I use. I'll be tying definitely the glow bug. I'll be tying it in uh, like a pale yellow and a pink and I'm going to be tying a pheasant tail. I'm going to be tying the GSS Emerger, but Jim Mizra has a great video on it too. So look up his video too. And I will be tying a Mitch Pupa, probably in red and black. And then I will be tying, the last one I'll be tying is a Hair's Ear Soft Tackle. Okay, so I got two Soft Tackles, the GSS Emerger and the Hair's Ear Soft Tackle. Um, the Pheasant Tail. Um, how I tie it, and then um, the uh, glow bug I'll tie, like I said, I'll tie two different colors for you there. So, this is my desk here. Um, something I want to show you, um, I don't, I mean, I could make a lot of space and set everything up real nice, but I, um, I, I never did that with uh, pegboard and putting all of the stuff up there, although some guys have a beautiful, beautiful setup in their houses. I've seen a lot of guys uh, tying rooms, and um, I just never really got into the. I, I basically tie out of need, <laughs> convenience, and for the money of it, okay? Uh, much, much more cheaper to tie your flies than it is to um, buy them, and... Um, and you know for what you pay for a fly you can tie i mean if a fly goes 250 or more for a fly geez 250 will buy a bag of material that'll last you all year or sometimes even a lifetime so i want to show you what i use and i've had this file box for 30 years if not even more than 30 years this is just a plastic filing cabinet box okay and this, uh, I'm going to try to show it to you here now, okay, alphabetically, this is 95% of all my material, okay, I have it just categorized as far as, um, a simple, simple cat category um, that I labeled it, um, I don't even go down to what, for my dubbings, um, I basically do a light dubbing, a medium dubbing, and a dark dubbing. Um, well, I call it uh, light dubbing, brown dubbing, and green dubbing. And it goes all the way down to, got my glasses off, uh, deer and elk hair, feathers, string dubbing, CDC, marabou and ostrich, grouse and partridge, necks, um, glow bugs, foam and larva lace, shrimp, chenille, Antron, Antron's huge uh, compartment. Um, uh, I, there's several more in here, but if it's somewhere in that category, it goes into that file. And um, like I said, I probably still have material in here from 20, 30 years ago that I haven't used up. Um, so um, my desk is organized. Um, have a lot of threads. I don't know. Maybe have about I don't know 50, 50, 50 different threads, and um, all my hooks I put in hook containers. I'll show you these. Okay, they're all with the manufacturer's numbers on it. Um, geez, I must have six, seven boxes of these. Okay, and um, same way all these here, like I said, with uh, beads, all my beads here, jig hooks, beads, more beads, more beads, more beads, okay, I got extra hooks here that I don't have, t 
tons of hooks here that I don't have room for in my boxes. Um, so I just basically wanted to show you, uh, and I got, this is basically my stuff. <laughs> Behind me is my son's stuff, which is he, he's all into musky pike and bass and he needs more and more cabinets because musky pike and bass flies, man, they use a lot of material, a lot of material to make those flies, but they look cool when they're done. Um, the big, 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 uh, eight, nine, ten weights, um, to throw those big flies though. Um, so let me get reorganized here. I'm gonna, uh, try to get as close as I can to the vice so you can get a nice, good, clear picture of it. And I'm going to talk you through it as I'm doing it. Most of these flies, glow bugs, basically are a 9 to 12 wrap fly. Some of these flies are literally a minute to two minutes to tie. And uh, so it'll be easy for you. They're simple, fly, simple flies to tie and they catch fish. And um, I guess my most involved one may be the... Uh, the uh, pheasant tail. The pheasant tail I'm going to tie it two different ways with just pheasant tail and then with pheasant tail and dubbing and then the uh, hare's ear soft hackle. The hare's ear soft hackle um, eh, that might take maybe five minutes to tie but uh, they're still mainly all simple flies. These are uh, I can't say they're the most frequent yet. Well, they probably are the most frequent ones I use, but I, you guys see by my videos, I switch my flies around a lot. I use a lot of flies, but these these ones are simple, easy ones to tie. That, um, like I said, I use often, and um, I think even as a beginner fly tire, you'll be able to tie these in no time and go out and catch fish with them. Okay, okay. Let me get organized here, and then. Uh, get a good zoom in on this vice and hook and we'll get started. Okay. Thanks guys Okay guys The first fly I'm gonna tie is the uh, glow bug. Okay. Um, I Use the original Glow bug yarn. Okay. I don't know how clear this is gonna focus in on it's the original glow bug yarn and This is only like maybe three or four dollars for a bag um, I use a lot of material and I'm using a little bit more than usual just for the sake of doing the video and showing you guys so you guys can see it better. Um, but I, I basically, let me show you here, I basically cut um, three strips of the glow bug yarn about an inch and a half. Now these are about two inches, but like I said I'm showing you there's three of them here, okay? And I'm doing that, I'm going to do it in hot pink which they call baby pink and this color is called egg okay and um, the reason I tie three strips is I like a very dense um, bug okay um, so I, not, I like it nice and dense and I'll show, tell you what else I'm using this is a Tiemco 24.99 hook okay I'm gonna put it here in here Okay, that is a barbless. S it's it's twenty four ninety nine SPL like special. Um, it is has like a super point on it, and has a little turned up eye there. It doesn't turn down. It doesn't really well. It goes straight. It goes more straight. And um, the thread I use to make a glow bug, you can use either of three um, uh, threads that I recommend. First is Kevlar, that's the strongest, okay? Then you have Good, good Broads, um, Super G or G, or you can use Uni Thread uh, 220D. And um, either use them in a red or pink for the, for the pink glow bug, or um, the yellow, I'm using yellow Kevlar for the yellow bug. Uh, for the sake of not changing of, of doing both bugs, I'm, I'm just going to keep uh, the yellow Kevlar on for, for both color uh, glow bugs I'm going to tie up. Now this is a super super simple fly, okay? So like I said, it basically comes down to 9 to 12 wraps besides you know putting your thread on your hook. And um, so let me show you, I'm going to get started here, okay? Take my glasses off, I see better, okay? Without my glasses when I'm tying. Okay, so basically you're just going to put your um, 
thread on your hook. I go back almost the same length. I come back up to uh, probably the first third of, of the hook. And Kevlar and this glow bug yarn, I have synthetic uh, scissors which uh, Dr. Slicks makes and they're great. But my son did something with them so I don't know where they're at. So I'm just using my regular fly tying scissors. But if you're going to be tying a lot of glow bugs, get the Dr. Slick synthetic scissors. They are great. They're super sharp. And because the Kevlar and the glow bug yarn really, really dulls your, your scissors. Okay. Um, so I have my three strips. They're about an inch and a half long, but like I said, nor normally I cut up an inch and a half, but it's two, two inches. I, I did it just for sake of showing you guys, and you could see them better. I stack them right on top of each other, okay? Stack them right on top of each other. I pull my thread down, and I'm going to make two, stick them right on top of the hook, right on top. And I'm going to make two loose wraps. I'm going to make those loose wraps. I get all the fibers and I pull up as I'm pulling, cinching down tight with the Kevlar thread. Cinch it tight, okay? So there's two wraps there. Then I open it up, open up the fibers, I go, <coughs> excuse me, one more wrap. So that's three wraps. Three wraps. Then you go, parachute wrap around the base of all the threads, I mean of all the um, strands, three times. One, two, and then we're going to do three. Okay, and then you pull nice and tight. You got to pull tight with glow bug yarn or it will slide off your hook. It will, it, um, the, 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 the bug will just fall apart after a couple fish. Okay, so you cinch them down tight. You parachute wrap them, loose at first, then pull it tight. And basically, you are really done at this point. I'm just going up to the eye of the hook, and then I will whip finish it. One, two, three, four, whatever you want to do for whip finishing, and you're done. The only thing you have to do is cut these fibers. Now, I make my glow bug about the size of a big kernel of a corn, and this. $24.99 that I'm using is a size 16 okay so basically you get all the fibers you pull them up nice and tight and I clip it pull them up nice and tight use the back of your scissors and I clip it maybe a I don't know not even a centimeter maybe uh, eight millimeters a little bit less than a centimeter cut it across. You can even curve it down a little bit to make it like a circle. And that's basically it. That is my glow bug. Now that one's still and I just form it around and make it a circle. Okay. This one, the underside of the hook is exposed. Okay. Right there. And you can just to make it look a little I, I could just leave it like that. Or, or you can just trim it up a little, make it look more like a half circle. That's all it makes is a half circle. And I trim it up a little, and that glow bug's done. That's it. The, the underside of the hook there is exposed, okay? Even though when it's all done, I kind of form the glow bug yarn around it and um, make it look like a little puff ball, circle ball. And um, it is very dense. Um, you can underneath put a little drop of cement on the knot um, or if you want to do your tie off spot too you can do both and um, I don't usually do it I, I can usually catch 30 40 fish on this and it won't fall apart okay so that is the yellow so and I have this all this waste and it's um, and remember um, I got a lot of more waste today because um, um, I, I cut the I cut the strands longer just so you guys can see, um, but the glow bug yarn is so cheap. A bag, a glow bug bag will last me an entire year, and I can make hundred glow bugs with it. So I really don't care. So now this again, this hook again is a size 16, SPL, Tiemco 24.99. Put it in my hook. 
And I'm going to do this one again. Put my thread on. I'll go all the way back to the start of the bend. Come back up to the first third. Okay. And I'm going to cut off my excess. Okay. Then I'm going to get my three pink fibers now. These are the three pink. And I'm going to put them right on top of the first. Let me get some pull my pull my uh, thread down to get so I can make my loose wraps put all these three fibers and it's kind of hard to you know keep everything in line and on top and I'm going to make two loose wraps one two that's real loose then I'm going to pull all of them up as I'm pulling down and cinching down on that thread okay the Kevlar thread then I'm going to open it back up do one more wrap, pull it nice and tight, then I'm going to parachute wrap three times, nice and tight, around the base, one, that's two, okay, and three, and then go up to the eye, Wrap up towards the eye and then tie it off. I mean, literally a one minute fly. Okay. And that's it. It went, went nice and slow for you. So when I'm in a groove, I could probably knock them out in 45 seconds. Okay. As long as you have all your material cut already and laying in front of you, that's kind of the hardest part. Sometimes you see these guys uh, tying so quick and uh, well, if you get all of your materials prepared beforehand, then you got everything nice and handy and you can go right about it. Whereas if you have to stop between each one and, and cut this, cut that, get this prepared, get another hook out, then it takes a lot longer. Get all of your supplies set up first and then start to tie. You know, if you want to tie a half a dozen, make sure you have enough um, of your material out for six flies and get it all situated and lined up so you can just go right down the line and grab the stuff and and tie it up and it makes your tie-in uh, much more quicker okay so this is done except for now you're gonna pull all those fibers up pull them all up nice and tight nice and tight and then you're gonna cut it maybe about eight millimeters almost a centimeter might be maybe three-eighths of an inch. I'm just guessing. And that, like I said, that I don't have the right scissors for it. And then I just form it into like a half circle. Okay, form that into a half circle, and it's basically done. Hope I didn't move that around too much. Let me get a real look. Excuse me. Okay, that still looks good. Okay. Let's get that, put that, focus that in a little better. Okay, so the pink one's done, and there's the pink, and there's the yellow. Okay, and that's how easy it is to make glow bugs. Okay, thank you very much, guys, and the next fly up will be a. I'll uh, do the uh, midge pupas, okay? Because they're real easy to. They're like, like one minute flies also. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, guys. The next fly we're going to do is a midge pupa. Very effective fly, okay? Um, I'm going to be tying it in red and black. And I'm going to be tying one with a glass bead and the other one with a silver bead. I also tie it with a white bead, okay? The hook that I use, I have to use my tweezers for this. The hook that I use is a Tiemco 206BL, okay? Here's the fly right there. This is the one with the silver bead, okay? A 206BL, which is barbless and a, it's like a caddis bend, but this does have a turned up eye, okay? Okay. Take my glasses off and always oh, a little bit tougher. Fat fingers. 
Make sure this is in. Okay. Let me turn this one down a little bit because it turns out. Okay, so there's the silver bead. This is a black hook, so I hope you can see it. Let me go behind the camera and I want to see if it's focused and okay for you guys. Um, no, let's focus that in a little better. That's better. Okay. So I'll be using first, I'll do the red one. Okay. And I use extra small, super fine silver ribbing wire for ribbing. Okay. First, put your build up a little dam, they call it a little dam behind the bead so the bead stays in place. Okay. Little dam. Okay, cut off your excess. And I get my thread, I mean my ribbing. Okay, this is the extra small, fine, silver ribbing. And I'll put it right up near the head. I'm sorry if my hand is in the way. I'll try to keep my hand out of the way. And I will go back pretty far with this. I'll go back even into the bend, maybe even all the way down there. It's already like the top third of the bend, okay? And now, I think the most critical thing, and it's still super easy, the only, the only material you're using is the ribbing, your hook and the bead, and thread. That's all you're using is thread for the body. But for me, what I think is the most critical thing about building a nice looking um, Mitch Pupa is the taper. Make sure you have, you know, you, whether you're using an 18, a 20, a 22, build a nice consistent taper from uh, thin, thinner down near the back and a nice, uh, I guess what they maybe call it, a cigar taper um, up towards the head, okay? So, that's about the only, to me, um, leave yourself a little bit of room uh, up near the back of the bead because when you tie off the thread, you're going to have a little bit of buildup there too. So don't make it too fat near the, um, near the bead. Okay, I'm just building my taper. Making it look nice and fatter as it goes up towards the head. Okay, that's basically it. And all my ribbings, I always counter wrap. Okay, especially with dubbing, because you don't want that ribbing when you counter wrap the opposite way you're doing your thread, uh, your ribbing doesn't get lost inside your dubbing. And also make nice concentric rings with your, don't make them uneven, make them nice and even, makes it a nice looking fly, okay, it's right up near the head. Okay, and just nip it off. Saving that for the next one. Cover up your thread there. And then, you know, for as long as I've been tying, 40 years, you'd think I would have learned to whip finish with my hand. And I haven't. Okay. And then at the end, I will coat the whole bead with a drop or two of lacquer and spread it around. I'm not going to do it now because I want to touch it and let it dry. So either way, this is all done. You can see how nice and nice taper, a nice concentric ribbing, a uh, nice build up around the back of the um, a build up around the back of the bead, and that's all that is. Um, thread and ribbing, and I mean it's it's literally another one minute fly. I'm going to go back and see how, 
nice and clear it looks for you. Oh, that really isn't that clear. Let's get that a little bit better for you guys. Okay. See if I could turn it this way. Okay. Maybe I can keep it in that position better. Okay. So that's a little bit better. I'll tie the black one now. Okay, we'll take this out. And use my handy dandy tweezers. And this one has the glass bead. Okay, same hook, Tiemco 206 BL. This is a size 20 that I'm using, a size 20. So I'm using the black thread now, 80 black, and build up a dam behind the bead to keep it in place so it doesn't slide on me. off my excess okay then I get my fine silver or extra small I don't know what they call it extra fine extra small that's the smallest ribbon you can, ribbon you can get of uh, silver wire okay get laying in there nice and I said I'll go all the way back even into the bend about a third of the way down on the bend okay down to about there then with your thread build your build your nice tapered body up to your bead okay Keep wrapping and wrapping. Nice tapered look. Look nice. Okay. And then you're going to do your reverse rib with nicely spaced concentric, um, concentric, um, spaces of your ribbing don't make them look all uneven they should all be evenly spaced okay right up to your bead uh -oh. got a little careless there Let me do that over again my thread is too loose on my bobbin and drop down on me. So I gotta tighten that up. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, and cut off your ribbing. Make sure you tuck it under a little. Okay. You would finish it. Okay, and that's as some people call it a zebra midge. I call it a midge pupa, all different names. But now that's with the um, that's with the uh, glass bead. Let me go back behind the camera. See how nice and clear it is for you guys. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, so I'll hold up. I'll hold up the red one. Okay. There's the red one. And the black one. They're size 20. Tiemco 206 uh, BL. BL, I guess, stands for barbless. And the hook is a black hook. It has a caddis bend to it with a teeny little turned up eye. And I like, the reason I use that hook, it has a nice wide gap. Real nice wide gap, okay? And um, so that's it. Another one minute fly. 
that used a lot of times in the wintertime, all year round, uh, a good fish, fish catcher, okay? So what's going to be next? The next one will be, we'll make the GSS a merger, okay? Next, okay, be right back. Okay guys, the next fly we're going to be tying, I'll tie two of them, is the GSS Emerger. Um, Jim Mizera ties this fly too, so check his site out too. Um, and this is made with, I'm going to show you the package, okay. First it's jackguardside.com is where you get the material, okay. Give you a ton of it, this will last me a lifetime, this material. Okay, this is what I call my Christmas tree <laughs> emerger because it's so glittery and uh, like an aqua green color. Okay, the stuff is called Guard Side Secret, Secret Stuff. <laughs> Guard Side Secret Stuff. Okay, it's very fine, very easy to work with, yet it does not dub well on a hook. Okay, um, you can use a dubbing loop if you want. I don't use dubbing loops. Uh, guys are, you know, and guys know how to do them really well. That might be more helpful in dubbing them. Um, as far as the hook goes, I'm using a Tiemco 100 standard dry fly hook. But I use all different hooks for this. I use a wet fly hook, a sprout bend. As far as the size, um, uh, the size will be uh, according to whatever caddis is hatching. On your local stream uh, you know if 16s are coming off tie it in 16s if 18s or 20s I mean I tie them in 16s 18s and 20s primarily okay um, so uh, this is like I said a standard dry fly hook Tiemco 100 I'm going to tie a an 18 first and then a 20 okay this material like I said is so easy to work with you don't need much of it it does kind of leave a mess on your <laughs> Leave a mess on your fly tying desk, but it vacuums up easy too. Um, I'll leave that over there. Um, this dubs easy if you have the super tacky, high tacky wax. Uh, wax. Um, a couple different companies make them, but I'm using Loon here. It may dub easier for you with that. Also, I will wet my fingers and use my saliva. And sometimes that makes it a little bit easier to dub onto the hook, okay? This whole fly is made from the same exact material, okay? <laughs> and all you need is thread and one bag of material and another fly that is a great fish, fish, fish catcher, especially during uh, caddis hatch or caddis time, really, just caddis time. Um, I catch fish on this in the regular drift. A lot of fish I catch on this on the swing. Um, the thread that I'm using, and you could use whatever thread you want, I like using Chartreuse 8.0. Why do I use Chartreuse? Because the Chartreuse, uh, when I tie off the head, I tie off the head a little bit fatter than usual because I use it as like a hot spot, okay? So, I don't know if that helps, but in my, in my mind, yeah, that's what I feel it does is maybe you know, help catches the fish attention, see that little light uh, hot spot on there and, you know, makes it a little bit easier for the fish to see, catches their attention, okay? So, let's go now. We're going to put our 80 chartreuse on the hook, okay? Go down so much and then off your excess. What I like to do, now this is just got a little clump of it here. I will pull it apart and break it up into a bunch of little pieces. For me, it makes it a little bit, it makes more of a mess, but it makes it a little bit easier to um, dub with those little pieces. Okay. I will put on a little bit of this super tacky wax. Um, I still may even see how well it dubs first. You don't need much of this at all. Okay. Like I said, it does not dub really that well. And I can't move the camera too much to, uh, I don't know if I'm getting the full thread on there, but 
Um, I can't say that I make a nice tapered body with this. Um, I basically trim it <laughs> to make it look like a nice tapered body. Um, now I'm wetting my fingers. And that seems to dub it a little bit better. It makes a very messy looking body. Okay, it makes a messy looking body. I'll even, now I'm just, uh, let me go back out a little bit here. Just to hold that down. Okay, it comes undone. You have to rewrap it a little bit tighter. This is still easy to tie, but okay it kind of has a tapered body I don't think see I don't know how well you can see it on camera but all these fibers sticking out I will trim off I will trim off okay and that's what gives me a better looking tapered body so it has that shiny aqua green looking body. Okay. Just cutting off the excess. And then I will use all that stuff that's on my desk is the stuff that I've uh, pulled apart into smaller strands for easier dubbing. So then I'll take some of these longer, so I'll pull out another longer strand. And uh, there may be maybe a dozen fibers there okay this stuff is so thin you just pull it apart and that's an that'll be for my second fly but this is this is probably about three four inches I will actually tie on there's about eh, maybe ten maybe ten fibers in this okay I will tie that on top of the hook okay then I will turn my hook upside down. The excess that was laying out front, I will tie on the bottom of my hook. Okay. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna there's not that much there, so I am gonna use this other clump here. Okay, I'm gonna use the other clump and I'll put it on the sides. I know Jim doesn't use that much in his. I like using a little bit more of my, a little bit more on mine. Okay. I tie this on the side of the hook, and I tie this on the other side of the hook. And it's going to make a nice fat head, which I don't care. Like I said, because I I like a a hot spot on there. Okay. And then, it's basically done, okay? All those fibers sticking out. Well, we're gonna clean them up at the end, but I'll pull all these fibers back, and I will tie them. I'll tie a bigger head, tie it back a little, so that the fibers are facing a little bit more rearward, okay? This is an easy tie to fly, but it's just messy of the material and then I will tie it off boom okay so that gives it that chartreuse hot spot head okay now you can trim this up either two ways Jim shows you I think by just pulling the fibers okay if you pull this material, it will break. And that's what I'll do with this one. And the next one, I'll trim it. It just gives it a cleaner cut. But I don't know, it doesn't make a difference. I catch, it doesn't make it really look much different in the water. Um, so I will hold it and pinch it uh, with maybe about um, a an eighth of an inch sticking out past the bend of the hook. And just pull it and break it. That's all you do. Pull it and break it off. Now that still looks a little long for me. So I can't pinch and do that. 
I can't pinch and break off those fibers are too too short so I'll trim it and I don't mind the trim look at all some guys don't like the trim look I don't I don't mind it I'll even give it kind of like a little half circle look and that is the GSS emerger and if you think there's too many fibers in there because I got a lot of fibers in there you can just trim a couple of them out okay better to have too much than not enough because then you can always get rid of the excess but if you don't tie in enough at first you can't add to it <laughs> so that's my GSS emerger and that's an 18 I don't tie well I can't I tie 16s 18s and 20s but probably the majority of them were 18s and um, 18s and 20s because the caddis there's a lot of small caddis on the Tully uh, there is one big one that's about a size 14, 16 ounce, so I, I will tie a couple of them up. So we'll put that back in there. Okay, that's the GSS Emerger with a hot spot chartreuse head. Let me see how that looks on the camera for you guys. Uh, not that good. Let's get that a little bit clearer. There you go. And I'll twist that around for you guys so you can see it. Okay, I guess the camera, the focus on my camera changes as I'm tying. Okay, so that's the GSS Emerger. See how glittery it is? Okay. And you can see that chartreuse hotspot head. And that's the only thing I think I do different than what Jim does. But it sure catches me a lot of fish. Okay, so let's do it one more time and we'll do this one <clears throat> with a 20. Okay, uh, 20 hook. This is a Tiemco 100 standard dry fly. But like I said, you can use whatever hook you like to use. This is the Ado chartreuse thread. I'll tilt it up a little. Okay. I start back behind the hook maybe about an eighth of an inch because the head gets fat okay clip off my excess okay and I'm gonna put some of that high tacky wax on since this is a one size smaller hook I don't think I'm gonna use as much of the uh, material the um, guard side secret stuff and I think the color the actual color they call this on the website is peacock so if you guys are going to order it Jack guard side Jack J A C K G A R T S I D E Jack guard side dot com okay and um, the uh, color of, the, of this material, I'm pretty sure, is called Peacock. Okay. Now, it's going to be all fluffy looking and wild looking. Probably put on too much on my thread, which I definitely did. Okay, because I don't need all this. That just, see, that just breaks and pulls off can't get much easier to tie than that okay pull this back a one wrap and I have plenty of space there then for my head and my uh, soft tackle fibers that I'm going to tie in then with my with my scissors I just trim the body up give it a nice tapered trim give it a haircut because this stuff when you wrap it goes wild <sighs> okay and I like not a lot of material right behind where I am um, I'm gonna put my uh, soft hackle fibers because I want those fibers to lay back and if there's a lot of junk sticking out be on the on the body they won't lay back they'll stick more sh straight out so I like to trim it up 
so it lets those uh, soft hackle fibers of the of the uh, wings or legs or whatever you whatever they're imitating lay back. I like it when they lay back. Okay. So now I'm going to get some of the longer fibers out of the package because all that on my desk is all the short fibers and. good with that one. Okay. Gotta get them all lined up nice and straight. Okay. I'm gonna get a little bit more again. So I only have to do it twice. Just a few more strands. Okay, lay them right up on top. Do like three wraps, pull it nice and tight. And pull back a little bit on it, pull it back and tight, tight again. Turn my fly upside down. Separate them around the eye, do the underside. Okay. Bring it back around. And if you want to, I mean, there's a lot on top, a lot on the bottom. You could spread them out, spread the fibers around. Makes it look more encircled and around the whole body. Okay. And then I'm going to put on my hot spot head. And then tie it off. Still, not much a, this is maybe a, you know, when you get in the groove, this is maybe a two minute fly, two or three minutes. All made with just one material. That's all those long fibers sticking out. I'm going to get this and pinch it off about an eighth of an inch behind the hook. Even if it's a little bit more, it's no big deal. Okay. That's a pretty good one. That one turned out real good. I like that one. Like I said, I'd rather have more fibers in there than less because on the stream, I can always trim it up and take, take some fibers out. Okay, that's not bad there. Let me go behind, see how it looks for you guys again. Okay, there it is, nice and clear. Okay. I'll turn this. You can see that side of it. There it is. Okay. Now those I broke off at a good distance, and uh, and uh, the one fly I tied earlier, I broke it off, but then I had to trim it up with my because my fingers didn't get in that tight for the first fly. So that is the GSS Emerger, another great fish catcher. Okay. There's no weight on that. I guess you could put weight on it, but. It works great like that. I love that, that hot spot chartreuse head on it. Okay, and I'll show you the package again. Guard sides, secret stuff. And I don't know how clear you can see that. JackGuardSide.com. And this is the peacock. Okay. Okay. We'll go on to the next fly. Okay. Okay, guys. Next fly up is the pheasant tail. This is still an easy fly, I think, to tie, but it's not a one two minute fly. This one takes a little bit longer. Um, so, let's just get right into it, okay? Um, I am using 8O Uni Thread Dark Brown Thread. The hook I am using is a Tiemco 102Y. Uh, it's a size 17, it's a European size. Why I like this hook, you could tie it on any hook. There's you could hundred different hooks you can tie it on, okay? 
Why I like this one, this one has a micro barb and it has an extra wide gap, okay? So, uh, it's a black hook too. And not that I'm partial to black or bronze or whatever, I mean, it, that, that doesn't matter, but I do like the extra wide gap and I do like the micro barb on it, okay? Um, ribbing I am using Danville Fine Wire Gold, okay? I'm gonna tie one with just all of pheasant tail uh, for the whole body tail and everything. The other one I'm going to be using pheasant tail mixed with uh, it's an angora angora possum angora possum dark brown dark brown which is basically the same exact color of a pheasant tail. Um, sometimes it's just easier if you have if you don't have long enough pheasant tail fibers it's hard to get a whole fly out of of, of um, you know your pheasant tail fibers you need fairly long ones so I got fairly long ones but I'm going to tie it both both ways and uh, and then my uh, thorax I tie with ice dub okay ice dub UV shrimp pink okay uh, that is my thorax hot spot that I put on my pheasant tail okay so let's get into it right now I have the hook tied on there already okay uh, and I'm going to put my thread in back from the hook about an eighth of an inch okay go back to about mid hook area okay I already got a couple um I got six strands of pheasant tail fibers here get them up okay now the six strands I'm going to tie them in at the tail end I usually make it about the same length as the hook shank okay roughly around the same length as the hook shank there you go I will tie them in These ones are actually from pheasants that I shot this year, and um, boy, they are, I mean, I got some long fibers here. So I will go back to the start of the bend of the hook, okay? Maybe a little bit more. I'll come back up just about an eighth of an inch. I will get my fine gold wire ribbing and I will tie it in in the back okay then I will pull my fibers back here my pheasant tail fibers pull them back and tie them in at the tail so I'm going to start my twist I'm going to twist my pheasant fibers like a rope Okay, build up some of the body. Okay, so I'll show you what I have the tail there. I have the ribbing, put that in my spring here to keep it out of the way. And then I have my six pheasant tail fibers. Then I will use a hackle plier. Okay, I'm going to go take my thread back up to the uh, beginning of my thorax okay which is about a third of the way back okay and I will twist these fibers see if I can sometimes I could twist them with the hackle pliers maybe I'll try doing that first okay so I'm twisting it like a rope. Okay, I ah, see I lost one fiber. Got to get that back in there. Make sure when you use your hackle pliers that you get all the fibers. Sometimes that's a pain. Okay. 
Now I'm twisting it. Then I'm going to be wrapping. Okay. It's actually making a nice segmented body all by itself. Okay, so I did well, right, basically about five, six, five wraps, and then I will wrap it off three times, okay, put it on that side, and then I'll get my ribbing and counter wrap my ribbing over top of those fibers. Okay, nice, concentric, even evenly spaced rib okay okay now get your thread and do two or three wraps to tie off your ribbing these things okay there you go okay my ribbing's done my hackle I'm gonna put this back here out of the way it's still twisted like a rope but now I'm gonna bring my thread up here towards to go back. I'm on the thorax now, okay? So then I'm going to use, and you can use for this uh, ice dub, you can use that uh, tacky, the super high tacky uh, wax from Loon, or you can wet your fingers with your saliva. Both work. Like I said, I actually like the saliva better. But there's the Loon high tack swax, they call it. Yeah, stuff gets on your fingers, tough to get off. So you don't need much of the ice dub UV shrimp. Okay. Don't need much of that at all. I'll probably dub maybe an inch, maybe inch and a half of my thread to make my thorax. There you go. I might like to make a nice, it, it is thicker than usual, want it to stand out, okay, and I will clean up around it because those fibers will get in the way of when I'm tying everything off. So I clean up my ice stub, okay, then I will get leave go of my hackle pliers and now we'll pull over these six fibers as the wing case okay and it's not evenly spaced it's just a wing case I like that uh, UV ice dub sticking out I don't want it covered up by the whole um, wing case I want those fish to see that. I want the fish to see that uh, thorax. Okay. So I tied it off three times, and now I'm going to separate three and three. There's six fibers there, so I'll take three and three. Okay. And I pull them back. Pull them back and I'm going to use these as legs. This is about the most difficult part because you have to kind of make a big head for it, okay? And because you're going to be pulling these back, you pull them back and hold them in. And even, okay? So then I'm going to wrap over top of those legs to make them go down, okay? 
So they're back. Even if they don't go down under it, they're sticking out from the sides. I'm going to clean up. I got a couple of these UV dub fibers that I just cleaned up. And then I will tie it off. The fly didn't take that long. Maybe five minutes. I don't know. But. Okay. Okay, so there's those legs there. I'm going to separate the legs so that they stand out more. The fly's done. Just going to trim off the legs. Okay, I'll trim them back. I don't know. Maybe. So about there. It's probably about three eighths. Three eighths of an inch. It depends on what size hook you're using, how big of a fly you're tying. Okay. So I'll turn that around, and with my with my uh, tail fibers, I'll clip off two. Cause there's six in there. And I just want four in there. Kind of makes it. Actually, there's a little. I'm gonna leave five in this one. So. Turn it this way, you can see, I'll turn it underneath, and let me see, I'm going to get behind the camera again, look at the screen, see how clear it is, that's pretty clear, okay, those legs might be a little long, so you can always trim them just a little bit. Okay, so we'll just turn that around. So there's three legs on each side, um, and I just used all pheasant tail. You can see how nice rib that is, the nice gold rib in there. Let me make this a little clearer. There you go. Make it nice and clear. Okay. I'll do it this way again. Underneath, you can see that UV UV body. Okay, and that's it. That's my pheasant tail. Actually, this pheasant tail that I'm using isn't as dark as I usually like it. That's like it's a dark brown, but it's not real dark. Um, I usually like them more dark, dark brown. Um, so. I mean, every pheasant tail has a slightly different color, so that wasn't bad, okay? So now we'll do it again. Let me get back here and see my see how clear it is. Get it nice and clear again for you guys. Okay, there you go. And we'll get another hook. And I'll just repeat everything again. I'm going to use the Tiemco 102Y size 17. I tie these in 17s and 19s. Basically 18, 20s, and 22s. I usually tie my pheasant tails in. Um, sometimes I'll tie 16s if I'm, you know, going somewhere where I think they have bigger uh, mayflies. Okay. So that's in there. I'm going to put my, okay, start my thread, go back to about the middle. That one's back a little bit further, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to get my six pheasant tail fibers. Had these already pulled out and pre-cut. I'm going to put them in about the length of the shank of the hook. Now this one actually might be a little bit easier to tie because I don't, I'm not using 
the uh, pheasant tail fibers for the body. I'm going to be using the Angora possum, okay, and uh, I like the Angora possum because very fibery, nice to use for shrimps. Now I'm going to put in my fine gold wire ribbing towards the back. And I'm going to leave those excess pheasant tail fibers facing forward, but I'm going to take my thread all the way up to the beginning of the thorax, right about there. Then I'm going to take my thread back. Okay almost to the rear, maybe an eighth of an inch before the rear and then I'm going to use regular wax this wax I've had for 30 years too 30 or 40 years, Wilson's wax God, it's the only wax I can't even remember I think I've only ever used two things of wax in my life the wax just lasts forever so I put the wax on my thread and remember I'm using 8-0 dark brown uni thread and get a little bit of the dubbing out and I don't I do not dub it too tight and I don't dub it too loose because I like it to look a little buggy yet tight enough that I can still get a nice taper out of it you always have to go from your tail skinny up to your body a little bit fatter that might be enough right there okay so tie in my dubbing what's nice about the ribbing too is if you make it too fat you can if you make it too fat you can pull your um, ribbing tighter and it can help mold your body okay Yeah, I got too much on there, so I'm going to pull the, this excess down. Okay, take it off my thread. I dubbed a little too much. Okay, then, so the tail and the body are done. So now I'm going to counter wrap my ribbing, the fine gold ribbing. Nice, even ribs evenly spaced ribs and like I said if you think it's too fat in area you could pull a little bit tighter on your ribbing that'll help squish it down and make it look more tapered or however you want it to look okay so that's in there okay hold that still okay Pull this, all my pheasant tail fibers back because I need to, them facing the back. So I'm going to build my thorax and pull them over from my wing case. Cleaning up my thread here. Okay, so I'm going to use the high tacky wax for the ice dub. Dab it on there a little bit. And where is my least of it? That's what I'm already taking it. Okay. Yeah, that's not dubbing. This one's not dubbing as well, so I'll wet my fingers. The synthetics just do not dub very well compared to the naturals, natural material. And if you feel like it's coming loose, pull it down and twist it again. That's a pretty good. Got a little bit too much on there so I just pull it out. 
It gets a little wiry looking, you could trim it up. Okay. So now, make, make me a little space there in back of the, the eye of the hook. Pull my pheasant tail fibers over for a wing case. Okay. Actually, I gotta move this to the forward, okay. And tail fibers are over top for the wing case. And then again, we have six fibers here. We're going to separate them three and three. And if it, sometimes it's easier to use a little pin. Okay. Oh, somebody always trying to contact me. Okay, so we got three and three on each side. <clears throat> We're going to pull these back and down. Back and down. And hold them in. And then build up your head, go over top of those fires so it kind of forces those legs back and down. What you did. And then tie it off. Like I said, all my flies I make, a lot of them I put uh, cement on uh, the head. But I'm just not doing it for us today. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to take these. I like to separate the legs again, just so that the, each individual leg sticks out. And there you go. Pull one down. And clip your legs to whatever length you want. There you go. I'll do these on this side. Okay. So that's it. It's done. And that's how I tie it with dubbing versus using just uh, the pheasant tail fibers. I think it's a little bit easier. Just you don't have to twist the uh, pheasant tail fibers into a rope. but. Six of one, half dozen of the other. Uh, let me see how clear that looks for you guys. Get that nice and clear. Oh, that's better right there. Okay. I'll show you that to you. Um, you can see those legs sticking out. You can see that hot spot thorax underneath. Okay. You can see that ribbing real nice sticks out from that dark brown dubbing. And if you want to trim up the uh, tails, if you want to take a couple fibers out of the tail, you can if it looks too thick. Um, so that is my pheasant tail. Okay. So I only got one more fly left. That'll be the hare's ear soft tackle. Uh, another great fish fish catcher, okay? Um, okay, let me get set up for that one. I'll be right back, okay? Okay, guys, the last fly I'm going to be tying for you is a hair's ear soft tackle, okay? Great fly to catch a ton of fish on it, okay? Especially during caddis time. I'm going to be tying this on a one a Tiemco 102Y size 19 okay um has a micro barb on it an extra wide gap okay it's a black hook like i said not that that matters for the body i'm going to be using slf squirrel natural fox or really any hair's ear blend any hair's ear blend will do i am going to be using and i don't always use it's your choice a um 
uh, fine gold wire rib, fine gold wire rib here. Okay. Then some some of my um, soft tackles I do tie a shuck in with. Other ones I don't tie a shuck. Just kind of what I'm, I'm usually, you know, I might if I tie up six or ten, I'll tie half of them up with a shuck, half without a shuck. Sometimes it might make a difference, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's the extra thing that helps, you know. So I just like to have a, a sum of each always on hand with me. What I'm using, what I use for my shucks. I don't like using white or clear. Um, uh, I like using a golden tan color. Uh, this is high vis, and boy, you can't get high vis anymore. At least I don't know where I find it in. When I go to shows, I find it in their scrap bins. But this is the color 18. They call it color 18, and it's like a golden tan color. Um, this, when I'm on the Tully for years and years, I used to look and I used to see these um, shucks floating down, or I would see the cat is crawling out of their shucks. They didn't look clear to me at all. They really looked like they were more like a golden tan color shuck. So I started tying any bugs that I wanted to shuck up with, with this color. And I was always catching fish on it. It was just, I stopped using clear or gray, light gray. Um, and I'm sure they work too, but this color seemed to always work better for me and if you see any of my videos in the past and I show you flies that have shucks on them they will always have this color on them okay um, and I'm just using an 80 tan thread okay regular uni thread 80 tan thread and um, so I got my hook in the vise already okay I'm gonna start it a little bit back from the eye I'm going to go towards the middle, clip off my excess, Ooh. got a little careless there, clip off my excess, then I'm going to put in my shuck, okay, my shuck, uh, and I don't make it with that many fibers, maybe, maybe a dozen of the uh, high-vis fibers. I'm just guessing that looks like about a dozen. Okay. Put it back up on the top. Sometimes this high vis or synthetic will roll on you. Sometimes, but not usually. Go back to the start of the bend of my hook. Right there. Okay, and I'll clip off uh, maybe a quarter inch right there. There's that quarter inch sticking out from my shuck. Okay, and I'll clip off the remainder here. See that? That's a lot left. I can use that on other flies. Then I will put my rib in. Tie that in towards the back. Stop right where I started with the shuck at the back. Have it sticking out the back. Okay. And just building the underbody a little bit here. Okay, then I'm going to use regular dubbing wax. Okay. Probably dubbed about three inches. And I'll get my SLF Squirrel Natural Fox or any hairs ear blend will do. I like the FLS Squirrel because there's a lot of guard hairs in it. So it has a little bit of Antron mixed in with it too. I don't know if that makes a difference, but I like it more for the guard hairs. Okay. I'm just going to start with that mount there. 
and start dubbing your body. I don't care if it looks buggy and there's guard hair stick out. There's guard hairs, trap fibers too. And um We'll dub up, or not dub, I will wind up to about maybe an eighth of an inch before the eye. Got to give myself room there for my soft tackle. Okay. Now, as with the GSS Emerger, some of this, I like it to look buggy, but not too much because it has to... You have to give room for the uh, soft tackle fibers to be able to lay back. If you have too many um, guard hair fibers sticking out, um, it gets in the way of the um, gets in the way of the soft tackle fibers. Now I'm counter wrapping my ribbing up. So besides the Antron giving it the Antron shuck or the or the high vis shuck, I should say, the high vis shuck giving it a little sparkle, this gives it a little sparkle too. Okay. Makes it stand out. Gotta catch that fish's attention. Okay. So I'll tie off the rib. Clean up around the head. Okay, now, when it comes to your soft hackle, I cannot recommend more getting a good quality Hungarian partridge for your soft hackles. Grade one if possible. I know they're more expensive, but they're not as expensive as a, um, like a saddle, um, a saddle neck or, you know, a regular rooster neck. You know, they're, they're really expensive if you get grade ones. But a grade one partridge, um, Hungarian partridge, is probably, I don't even know, 30 bucks maybe. Um, but it'll last you like, almost a lifetime. And what it gives you is just really, really nice um, feathers. It gives you really nice um, feathers to do saw tackles with, okay? This one's a little bit long, but I don't mind... I would. I actually like when my uh, soft hackles extend back to the shuck. Gives it a lot more action. Like I said, whether this these soft hackles act as legs, whether they act as wings, whether they act as a shuck, it gives it a lot of movement. So I don't mind if the uh, soft hackle extends past uh, the bend of the hook. You actually you want it to. And uh, at least maybe the length of my um, uh, shuck, okay? So I do mine, you could tie these in all different ways. I tie mine in uh, at the back first, okay? The thicker end. And I like to wrap towards the thinner end. I've tried it other ways, but it just seems to work better for me this way, okay? So I'll put that in nice and tight. I will clip off. the stem okay even wrap a couple times over the stem and then I will use my hackle pliers grab it at an angle at the tip make sure you got the stem okay make sure you got the stem and then wrap I wrap one or two or three wraps whatever I can get out of it towards the eye okay and I don't care, it doesn't have to be perfect. They can, my thread can go in between all of those um, soft hackle fibers. It doesn't matter one bit um, because at the end here, okay, excuse me, I'm gonna clip off this tip. Get my hand out of the way, sorry. Okay. I clipped off that tip there, and they're all sticking out all over the place. I wet my fingers a little bit and pull all these fibers back. Now, you don't have to wet them, but sometimes it's easier for me to hold on to all those fibers 
if my fingers are a little bit wet. And then I wrap over top of all those fibers so it forces them back. Okay. Let me clean up that head a little. There you go. And then I will just tie it off. See how they're all going back and clip off my thread. Okay, so there is my hair's ear soft tackle. Okay, um, let me want to go back behind the camera, make sure you guys can see it nice and clear. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, good, good, good. Let me turn it for you. You can see all the way around it. Okay. And when that gets totally wet underneath the water, those fibers will lay back. I mean, they're sticking kind of up and back, but they'll lay back even a lot nicer, especially when you get them the uh, your drift on the swing, they lay back, they flutter around. That that shuck sparkles a little bit. Um, great emerging um, bug. Great emerging bug imitation. Okay. So that's it, guys. Um, I know this was a fairly long video, but each tie you see was not uh, that long. Um, the longest ones were the pheasant tail and and this. Uh, uh, soft hackle and they may have been you know a little bit more than five minutes but um uh, all my other ones that I tied up were one two three minute uh, ties and um, uh, recommendations that I could say is before you start tying make sure you get all of your material out for whatever amount you want to tie make sure you have everything set up so you can easily just pick each pick each piece of material up and use it so it's all sp and um, just get everything organized first and your your uh, tying will go much more smoother okay I like to have a white um, uh, this is just a desk pad that I'm using but it really uh, helps a lot with um, uh, seeing all my material and um, uh, as far as I wish I kind of had a white black background too because that would help things stand out you know the, but I don't my eyes aren't that bad yet <laughs> so um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, please uh, comment below if you have any questions thumbs up it if you like it show your buddies and um, Merry Christmas have a happy new year and hopefully I'll bump in bump into some of you guys in 2018 if you see my gold dodge pickup truck please stop by don't be a stranger and say hello okay thanks guys